Hello everybody and welcome to part 4 of what if Izuku Midoriya was the Avatar. This great series that kind of grabs Avatar lore in a way, mixes it up a bit with MHA stuff and puts it into that world, making Izuku the 6th holder of the Avatar quirk. Yes. I hope you guys are enjoying the series, this time I'm pretty sure I have a pretty good episode ready for you guys, so if you enjoy it please like and subscribe if you're new. And of course, enjoy! The battle trial had come to an end, and the students returned home, but they did not have much time to rest as school resumed the next day. When arriving at school, the students were faced with the members of the press who were asking them questions. Some students answered their questions honestly, while others either ignored the questions or came up with an excuse not to answer them. In the end, they got so bad that Aizawa had to walk out and ask them to leave the students alone. I watched the video feeds of yesterday's combat training. Decent work all around. There's no use going over the different results, so let's just move on. Aizawa said, shifting his gaze from his written evaluation over to his class. Our first task will decide your future. Hearing that, many students start to freak out. It could be anything. It could be another quirk assessment test, or maybe something even worse. Their nerves were calmed once Aizawa continued. You all need to pick a class representative, he announced. He then stepped out of the podium and started putting on his sleeping bag, all while the class began suggesting ways to decide who would get the position. While Aizawa napped, Ida proposed a system that everyone could agree on. They'd each get a vote and choose democratically who would end up as the representative. Once the votes were in, they were counted together, and Momo Yakirozu ended up being elected with three votes, while the vice rep turned out to be Kirishima, with two votes. Right after the class representatives were elected, the period came to an end, and the students went to the cafeteria to eat lunch. That was a crazy class! I totally thought he was going to expel someone towards the beginning. Thought we were going to lose another potential hero in the making, Uraka commented after sitting down with Izuku and Ida. I'd hate it if he were to expel me. That'd be awful, but I doubt he'd do that. I don't think he's one to expel people who have heroic potential, Izuku said, calming his friend. Right, as long as you have an admirable motivation and the willpower to pursue it, I believe he won't expel us, Ida added. Yeah, the thing is, I don't really think my motivation is that noble in this situation. Uraraka shyly admitted. It was something she didn't want to share with her new friends, especially early on. Why not? Why exactly do you want to be a hero, Uraraka? Izuku probed. Uh, well, Uraka stumbled. I want to be a hero because of the money. Really? The money? Izuku and Ida asked, each giving a slight variation of the same sentence. Yeah... Uraraka answered, slightly embarrassed. I'm sure your motivations are much more noble compared to mine, but still. Not at all. Your objective is to support your well-being. That's a perfectly admirable motivation to have. Ida commented, wanting to cheer the girl up. The motivation wasn't a bad one. Wait, that's not it at all. She exclaimed, not wanting her two friends to get the wrong idea, so she explained in detail, telling Izukunita about her family's struggles. What about you guys? Why did you sign on to the hero course? She asked, wanting to change the subject after it was discussed for a bit. She turned her head to Izuku first, so he was the first to give his answer. Well, you see, ever since I was little, I had this feeling that something was wrong. Then, when I was three, I saw this video of All Might on the news, and that video really got me going. I fell in love with heroes and wanted to be one ever since. I was lucky to have a quirk I could use to accomplish my dreams, Izuku said, reminiscing on his childhood. What about you, Ida? Uraraka asked after taking a bite of her food. It's because there's a hero I admire, he answered. Do you two know about the Turbo Hero Ingenium? Hearing that question, Izuku answered by giving all the information he had on that one hero. 
Ida then revealed himself as the younger brother, explaining his heritage and his desire to be a hero due to that. Moments later, an alarm started going off, throwing the cafeteria into a panic. One that was only calmed down by Ida, who got everyone's attention and told them of what was happening. Izuku wanted to act as well, but found he didn't have enough space to bend. The situation resolved, the students returned to their lunch. After that ended, classes resumed and Class 1A continued their election of the rest of the class government. The next day, the students went through their classes. It seemed like any ordinary day until at 5th period, Aizawa informed the class of the special training they'd be conducting. What kind of train is this gonna be? Zero asked curiously, but in truth, he was just voicing what the whole class was thinking. Rescue, Aizawa answered while holding up a small sign that read the same thing. We'll be dealing with natural disasters, shipwrecks, stuff like that. Hearing those words, Izuku's face lit up like a candle. He wanted to be a hero and to him, this was one of the most essential elements of doing that. It was the reason why he wanted to be a hero to help people. This training would get him one step closer to his goal. Aizawa then presented the students with their costumes, telling them that they could wear whatever they wanted. Excited about the whole situation, everyone picked to go in their hero costumes, and the class then headed to the off-campus facility. After a 15-minute bus ride, the students arrived at their destination, where they met the Space Hero 13 who greeted them as they arrived. It's the Space Hero 13, the chivalrous pro who has rescued a ton of people from disasters across the world, Midoriya said, marveling at the hero. Woohoo! 13 is one of my favorite heroes! Uraraka added before 13 led them into the facility. I can't wait to show you what's inside, 13 said, inviting the students in. She started presenting the facility to the students, explaining what it's for and talking about the danger of quirks in general. Right, now that's over, Aizawa stated, wanting to get the exercise over with. They were one staff member short and the sooner they got started, the better. As they got ready to start the training, a weird electric discharge went around the facility, causing havoc on the USJ's lights and electronics. Moments after, a portal opened in the middle of the facility with a man covered in hands stepping out, a monster with an exposed brain following moments later. It was a sudden development that surprised both the students and teachers. Sensing a familiarity in the situation, Izuku let out a very soft whisper. All for one? Did you say something? Ida asked, thinking it was some sort of shocked comment. What? Izuku asked, turning back to Ida. He didn't recall saying a single word, just staring at the unfolding situation. Never mind, Ida responded. He may have just imagined it but he still took note of the words that had just been uttered. More and more portals started opening across the facility, with villains stepping out of them. Once everyone had arrived, the main portal in the center of the facility manifested eyes and took a humanoid form. All of you, stay together and don't move! Thirteen, protect the students! Aizawa shouted, putting on his glasses while he studied the situation. Has the train started already? I thought we were rescuing people, Kirishima asked, confused. This didn't match up with what they had been told before. Stay back! This is no joke! Those are real villains! Aizawa shouted, scaring his students a bit. If things went poorly, fear would be what kept them alive. After taking a moment to analyze the situation carefully, Aizawa left the students in 13 scare and jumped into the battlefield to act as a distraction. He knew he wouldn't last long, but he could buy time so his students could escape and call for help. As most students started running to the exit, Izuku stared at the battlefield, transfixed on the center plaza's humanoid monster. He felt a familiar feeling when looking at it and was trying to figure out why that was. This is no time to analyze the situation. Hurry up and evacuate! Ida shouted, snapping his friend out of thought. Right, 
Izuku responded, ignoring the fight that was now going on in the center plaza and running towards the exit. They were still halfway to the exit when their path was interrupted by one of the villains who suddenly materialized in front of the group of students. There is no escape, he stated. It's a pleasure to meet you. We are the League of Villains. I know it's impolite, but we have decided to invite ourselves into this haven of justice to say hello. And besides, isn't this a fitting place for All Might, the symbol of peace, to take his last breath? I believe he was supposed to be here today, yet I see no sign of him. There must have been some sort of change of plans that we could have not have foreseen. Ah well, in the end, I suppose it doesn't matter. I still have a role to play. After he finished, Thirteen prepared to subdue the villain using her quirk, but two of her students jumped in the way before she could, eliminating that possibility. Bakugo and Kirishima jumped at the misty villain. Kirishima tried punching him but failed, hitting only air. At the same time, Bakugo launched an explosion at the villain, creating a smoke screen. Did you really think we were going to just stand around and let you tear this place to shreds? Kirishima asked, thinking they had just beaten the villain. You live up to your school's reputation, but you should be more careful, children. Otherwise, someone might get hurt. My companions will take care of you, the villain said while starting to expand his body. Both of you, get back! Thirteen shouted, wanting to disable the villain quickly. But she was too late. The villain expanded his body to engulf the students. Like Eden Shoji, some students reacted quickly, grabbing their companions and jumping out of the way, while others were captured by the portals that the villain opened up. Inside one of the ruined zone's buildings, a portal opened up, spitting both Baku and Kirishima out. What just happened? I thought we had him! Kirishima said, a slightly confused expression on his face. Damn it! Bakugo shouted, slamming the wall with a small explosion. Hey, hey, calm down, man. Kirishima reacted, concerned for his classmate. He could empathize with the sense of uselessness that Bakugo was probably feeling. I get that you feel like you failed, but... Shut up, Bakugo said, keeping his gaze fixed. Come on, man, don't be like that, Kirishima responded. No, I mean shut up. Bakugo shouted, running towards the door, taking down a villain that was trying to ambush the two students. They're here! Another one shouted, causing many more villains to storm their location. A fight broke out, but thanks to their efficient use of their quirks, the two students managed to defeat most, if not all, the villains in the area. Think that's the last of these guys, Bakugo commented while catching his breath. Bunch of weaklings. Great. Let's hurry and find the rest of our class. If we're both still in the USJ, then everyone else probably is too, and not all of them have the offense skills we do. Kirishima suggested, wanting to help his friends out. We gotta make sure they're safe, especially since we screwed things up when we got in the way earlier. None of this would have happened if we had let 13 suck up that villain. We gotta take responsibility, man. If that's what you want to do, then go ahead. I'm going after the warp guy, Bakugo commented. As they discussed the best course of action, a camouflaged villain crept around the area, lunging at Bakugo. Bakugo quickly spotted him and took him down just as he convinced Kirishima to go along with his idea. They then set out towards the center plaza, where the villain they were looking for was likely to be. At the same time in the landslide zone, Taroki was shot out of a portal. Surrounding him were a bunch of villains. The moment he came out, he quickly scoured his surroundings and evaluated the situation. He unleashed a wave of ice that incapacitated all the villains around. Having them all immobilized, Taroki interrogated them, finding out their plan quite easily. They were low-level thugs after all, no real threat, even for a student like him. After finding out what they had planned, he headed to the central plaza. What is that? He asked himself on the way, spotting something that appeared above the flood zone. Seeing that thing come from out of nowhere, Taroki quickened his pace. 
While many students fought for their lives throughout the USJ, the students who managed to escape Kurogiri's portals discussed their best course of action. They had managed to ascertain their classmates' locations thanks to Shoji and had come up with a plan to call for help. Although there were a couple bumps along the road, Ida, thanks to his teacher and classmates' help, managed to get out of the USJ, running as fast as he could towards the main building to get help. Over the flood zone, a portal opened in the middle of the air spitting Izuku out. He was disoriented for a moment, but he managed to get his bearings, opening up his flight suit and gliding above the water. As he flew, he saw many villains on the water. Some were already looking up while others were slowly surfacing. As he observed the situation, he saw Tsuyu come out of the water throwing Mineta onto the boat in the middle of the zone before jumping onto the boat herself. Izuku then reconvened with his classmates, landing onto the ship. Oh, hey Midoriya, Ribbit, Tsuyu said after seeing him land. Glad you two made it out of the water safe. You got a good look from above, right, Ribbit? What's our situation? Tsuyu asked. Not very good. There were about ten when I landed, but more and more are coming out of the water, Izuku responded. But that's not what's bothering me the most. What? It isn't? Minita responded in a panic. We're surrounded by freaking villains! What can have your attention at a time like this? Calm down, Minita. Tsuyu suggested, causing Minita to, for some reason, remember his first day at the school and what he had told Aizawa. He then closed his mouth and paid attention. It's what that Miss guy said, Midoriya clarified. They are here to kill All Might, which means they somehow knew our schedule and that All Might was supposed to be here, so that indicates planning. They said they plan on killing All Might, so they must have some way to do that. Hearing that, Mineta wanted to freak out. He wanted to scream at the irrationality of that, but instead he kept calm and spoke. They can't really hope to beat All Might, right? He's the symbol of peace. Once he shows up, he'll defeat them easily. Think about it. They must have figured out some way to beat him. Otherwise, why come here? Rabbit, so you asked. They also promised to kill us. There's a chance we might not survive to that point, Izuku reasoned. We'll hold out, Mineta whispered. We'll hold out until All Might gets here. The two students nodded to Mineta's statement. All the while, Izuku kept thinking, mumbling to himself while he did. Our best bet is likely fighting them head on and conveying the information we know to our teachers, Midoriya suggested after a bit of thinking. How do you want us to fight them? Minera asked while he screamed to himself internally. He was trying his best not to ruin the situation or waste time by shouting, but he didn't want to fight them if there was a chance that they could beat All Might. We need to consider all the facts here if you want to fight them. If we look at the villains down there, we can clearly see they have the advantage in the water, and they assume that's where we're gonna fight, Izuku noted. Which means they knew what was inside the USJ before they came, Tsuyu added. Yes, but they do not seem to know much about the students they were trapping here, Izuku noted after closer examination of the situation. How do you know that? Mineta asked. Look at Asu, I mean Tsuyu. She's good in the water, yet they brought her here anyway. For all they know, we could be more powerful than All Might, so they're keeping their distance and observing us first too, Midori explained. If you really want to beat them, we need to cooperate. What are your quirks? Each one of them then took turns explaining their quirks. Minera told them about the sticky balls he could produce. Tsuyu mentioned her quirk gave her the attributes of a frog, while Izuku told them how his quirk allowed him to control the four basic elements. Good. Now all we need is a basic strategy, Izuku said as he started to think. I'm getting bored over here. Let's get the show on the road, one of the villains said. He used his quirk to create a giant hand made of water and slammed against the ship, splitting it in two. It then began to sink. As it did, Mineta started panicking again. He just wanted to throw his quirk into the water and see what that would do, 
But what Izuku had just said and the circumstances they were in made him reconsider. Instead, he kept calm. Looks like we're going to have to fight our way out of this whether we want to or not, Tsuyu said as the boat sank. As the boat sank deeper and deeper into the water, the villains got ready to attack. The one who had sunk the ship was the first to attack. He used his quirk to create another fist of water and slammed it straight against the students. The boat wasn't fully underwater. Parts of it were still floating on the surface, giving the students a platform to stand on. Izuku took a step forward while pushing his hands up. Suddenly, the coming fist stopped. Izuku then split his arms apart. Obeying his commands, the water did the same. What the hell? asked the villain, as Izuku froze the two water bodies and shot them back at the villains. We have to beat them right here and now, he shouted. Right, the other two students responded. Izuku and Tsuyu lunged at the villains ready to do battle. Izuku was using his court to walk on water while he fought. At the same time, Tsuyu swum around to do the same. Minato was assisting them from the debris of the ship, trying to stick some villains together. The three students fought bravely, but in the end, the enemy proved to have larger numbers. All three of them took hits, but when Asu was bitten in the leg and thigh, things took a turn for the worse. Ah! She screamed. At this point, both Minette and Izuku were already bleeding a bit from being pierced by the spear of a villain they had immobilized, but this was different. Hearing that scream made something inside Izuku snap. Blood then started gushing out from the wounds with Tsu trying to stop the bleeding. He stopped fighting and returned to an upright position on top of the water, closing his eyes. Oh, this is gonna be easy! The villain that had bitten Asui said lunging at Izuku. His eyes then opened. They weren't the same as before. They were glowing. Izuku then lifted his arm and the villain just stopped in the middle of the air. He just hovered there for a second, trying to wiggle away. An unsettling smile crept over Izuku's face. He closed his palm, and the air got thin around the villain. Small cuts then began appearing around his body while blood slowly came out of them. The pain crept over the villain, and he let out a muffled scream. Minata passed by Izuku, landing in the water next to him. Seeing that, the young Bender turned his head to face the villain that threw his classmate. You're next, you damn brat, the villain shouted. Izuku took another look around, spotting many villains that had yet to be defeated. There had to be at least 50 more of them. That smile that was on Izuku's face only grew bigger. As he looked, he saw Tsuyu swim up to the surface and cling to a piece of debris. She had done all she could not to drown, but was still bleeding out. Izuku raised his fist and tightened it. Water tentacles came out from the water and grabbed onto the villain that had bitten Tsuyu before. Midoriya then shot his hand down, and the villain sunk into the water. The villains charged at Izuku. Seeing this, Tsuyu raised her hand trying to reach out to help her classmate. She knew he wouldn't be able to take all of them on alone. Midoriya just raised his palm at her as if indicating her not to come. Suddenly, the warmth that she had felt slipping from her body returned to her. She looked down at her leg, then back at Izuku. For only a second, he saw a woman in his place, but once Tsuyu blinked, it was Izuku there again. As the villains approached, Izuku put his hands in a strange position, as if making his fear with them. The water started to gather around him, making a giant body. He quickly moved around, slapping the villains away, knocking them out in the process. It only took him three strikes to take them all down. That was somewhat entertaining, Izuku commented to himself, another voice coming out as he spoke. What else is there to do around here? Hanging higher vantage points, he looked around, spotting the battle that was going on in the central plaza. Oh, that looks like fun, Izuku said, again the female voice coming out of his mouth. He then started moving, taking the whole body of water from the flood zone with him. 
In the process, Mineta Tsuyu and those villains who were at the bottom of the lake fell out. But before they hit the ground, their fall was stopped by a pillow of air that formed seemingly out of nowhere. What's that? Aizawa asked, getting distracted from his fight for a second. The villains around him seemed to be distracted by the giant water creature as well, so Aizawa took the chance and attacked them. Could that be Midoriya? Aizawa wondered as he kept on fighting. How annoying, Shigaraki whispered to himself. Kurogiri then manifested next to Shigaraki, informing him that one of the students had escaped the facility. Damn it! Not only are the students here better than expected, but now you have to fail like that? You know, if you weren't our gateway, I'd kill you. Shigaraki threatened. No, Mo. I still have to take care of this nuisance, so go deal with that kid. The Nomu heeded its master's orders and jumped at Izuku, all while Shigaraki charged towards Aizawa. The Nomu jumped into the air and went flying towards Izuku. The monster wound up for a punch, but once he made impact, the water froze to ice, absorbing the blow. Having exhausted its kinetic energy, gravity took hold and the monster started falling towards the ground. The water giant swung its fist, turning the water into ice on impact and throwing the monster into the ground at high speeds. The impact broke through its skin, but it quickly healed and jumped back into the air. Izuku tried hitting him back down again, but the Nomu used the ice as a jumping off point, readjusting his trajectory and heading towards Izuku. As he got close to him again, spikes of water shot out of the water giant, hitting the Nomu down into the ground. It quickly healed from the attack and jumped back up, heading towards Izuku once again. The water giant smacked down, wanting to slap the Nomu away again, but before it made impact, the Nomu just vanished into thin air. Izuku inside the water giant started looking around. Aww, where'd he go? And just as we were getting started, the female voice coming from Izuku's body said. A portal then opened up inside the water giant, just in front of Izuku. The Nomu came flying out, hitting Izuku with as much power as it could. Izuku quickly bent the water around him, trying to kick the Nomu away. He didn't manage to, being hit by the blast and knocked unconscious. But he did manage to weaken the punch enough not to be killed by it. Izuku went flying through the air as the water fell back into the hole it was previously in. Tsuyu, having somewhat healed from her injury, shot her tongue out and caught an unconscious Midoriya just before he hit the water. She and Mineta then took him towards the exit. <laughs> that was so much fun! I haven't enjoyed myself so much in years! An Asian looking woman with a tan skin stated. She seemed to be wearing some bloodied and torn dark blue kimono and hakama. She looked like she was sitting on something, but Izuku could see nothing there. Who... who are you? Izuku asked, confused. He then started to look around, seeing nothing but blackness. Where am I? Name's Mizuchi Mizao. I'm the third, she answered. And give it some imagination, kid. You are wherever you want to be. This is all inside your head, after all. Personally, I'm picturing a nice little landscape. As soon as she said that, the land around Izuku became clearer. She was now sitting on a boulder near a lake and a waterfall. Next to them was also an expansive field. What was that? Izuku exclaimed, surprised. He did not expect for that to happen. <laughs> Man, kid, you're so clueless, Mizuchi taunted. As I said, this is all in your head. Well, not totally, but still, close enough. What happened to my friends? Are they alright? Izuku asked, concerned for their safety. The last thing he remembered was Asui being bitten by that villain. They're fine, she scoffed. We had to make sure of it. But you wouldn't have been in so much danger if you just knew how to use your power better. You're so stiff, so constrained. It's a wonder you can even move. Your energy's so mixed up. There's no flow at all. 
You need to focus on the element. Be aware of it in all forms around you, of every drop of water. Let the energy flow. You aren't that good at earth and air either, but better than water. Not to mention you haven't used fire yet, have you? What's up with that? I... 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 Izuku started not knowing what to answer. What? Too scared of that power? She asked. Midori just put his head down in shame. It's not that, he answered. Yeah, it doesn't fit you much. Personally, Earth was the hardest for me to learn. It's so constricting, like society. I need more freedom to be allowed to do what I want, she said. The water from the river next door started overflowing as more and more water poured into it from the waterfall. What? What's going on? Izuku asked. The whole situation was so surreal. Was it a dream? A vision? Why did that woman look so familiar? We're out of time. You really gotta figure this stuff out, man. Hope you turn out to be less of a disappointment in the future. Eh, you're still gonna be better than the last, the woman said, a creepy smile on her face. See you next time. A gust of wind showed up from out of nowhere, carrying dust. Izuku was forced to close his eyes. When he opened them again, the woman was gone. He then looked around as the water started rising quicker and quicker. He reached up trying to cling to the surface, but found stone clinging to his feet. He reached up, grasping at the surface, trying to avoid drowning with all his might, but it was too late. He lost consciousness. With a gasp, Izuku woke up trying to grasp at something that was no longer there. Where... where am I? Izuku asked after realizing his true surroundings. Only then did he realize that he had woken up in the infirmary. He then reeled back as the pain from his body hit him at once. Oh, you're awake, Recovery Girl noted. You take it easy, sunny boy. You took quite a beating. Gummy? Izuku nodded and was given a couple pieces of gummy bears. What... What happened? He asked, staring at the ceiling. The last thing he remembered was fighting those villains in the flood zone. Then everything went black for a moment and he had that talk with that lady. And now, now he was here. You beat them all, Minita said from the bed next to him. Yeah, you did quite a good job, Ribbit. Although you were very scary while doing it, Tsuyu added. His friends then filled him in on everything that happened at the USJ. Not just what he did, but what happened after. It turns out All Might turned up to save the day a man should do so thanks to Todoroki, Baku, and Kirishima's help. Even Aizawa, who was beaten up a bit by the League's leader, managed to help. As he heard the story, Izuku readjusted himself on the bed and stared at his hand. A worried expression overcame his face. Are you alright, Midoriya? So you asked. Yeah, fine, Izuku answered while still staring at his hand. Questions about his power started swirling through his head. He thought he understood his power pretty well, but there was still so much he didn't know about it. And that's the end of the video. Hope you enjoyed the first appearance of Mizuchi Misao, the third avatar in this world. If you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Of course, only do that if you're new, otherwise you'll be unsubscribing, and I don't want that. So, yeah. Um, first appearance of the new Avatar. Many of you have been theorizing in the comments how that's gonna work, like the Avatar state. So, there you have it. I do hope you guys are enjoying the series, and yeah. Until next time, everyone, have an absolutely fantastic day. Bye!